Hi viewers and welcome to yet another exciting episode of 50 Minutes in Waxi where we discuss issues that affect non-profit organizations across West Africa and the civic space in general. Today we are broadcasting live from Sierra Leone. Uh, precisely we are at Freetown where we came to do some coaching exercise. Today I have a very interesting guest in the person of Kovna Crodier who is the head finance for the West Africa Civil Society Institute. Mr. Crodia, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you feeling? Well, it's, um, <laughs> it's a pleasure and it's an interesting learning and sharing episode. Um, I think it's, it's been the, the practicality of the challenges we've been talking about that I have come to see. Um, and also for feeling to see how people are translating um, the knowledge we are impacting and sharing in their own way. And it's been an interesting two weeks. And oh. Okay. Before we get into the nitty gritties of what you came here to do, is this your first time in being in um, Sierra Leone? Seriously, that is it. And I, I, I must confess... I missed, I missed my, my fufu back home. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, um, so you've been here for the past two weeks, I understand. Um, can you walk us through what this coaching exercise was, was all about? Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you, Anand. It's, 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 I should commend um, the partner who we work and with. And also with the fortitude of seeing that civil society must grow and they must grow to the relevant times. It's, it's been, as I said initially, a, a thrilling experience. And I have come to also appreciate that sometimes when the numerous challenges these people we have worked with come for trainings, what they go through and how they share it. It's, it is perfect to be on ground to see what the real challenge is. And I think it has also given us the opportunity to also share and possibly help them identify the resources around them. Okay. I think there's a longer and a better way we can collaborate with growing institutions and the logistics around too mm -hmm. um, has also been another thing that we need to work at. I, I think even, even the experience of traveling within the COVID time yeah. has been another thing in itself. But we are learning, and I believe uh, the few pointers from governance to resource mobilization and project management, um, I mean, that we, we shared our views on, will, will, will propagate civil society within Sierra Leone to a better um, status. Okay. okay, so I understand that you worked with the Critical Ecosystem Partnership Fund, CPF and you delivered some training in different areas that, um, that you identify from a needs assessment that was done, right? Yeah. In project management, in finance, and grants management, in monitoring evaluation, and even advocacy and communicating results, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> how was that training? Okay. When you go to the field, right now you're doing coaching, what do you think have been some of the results the partners have achieved so far? How have they utilized the training? I think the time between the training and this coaching has been short. Mm -hmm. However, I could say about 60% of the um, partners we met have actually imbibed the training mm -hmm. and had taken steps to building their organizations. Initially, from a scan of what I did with them, 
I realized that majority of them were projectiles. Mm. Currently, in the in the shift to um, building the organization, the mentality has been sharpened to building an organization for which institutional memory can be um, can be held on to yeah. and possibly relied on to say this is the growth and the path which would come. Um, I I think from the point of the governance bit, mm -hmm. majority of these organizations were built by a concept and a passion from their leaders. And so it has seen the growth of these organizations where there is a migration from the person who built the idea to now having a management team and even now, I think there are about two or three that we had seen that the the founders are almost getting to their retirement period. And for that matter, after the training, they've also seen the succession planning mm -hmm. is an e efficient part of organizational growth. And so they they have bought into the idea. And thankfully, I think our our in country resource person that we also use is 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 a hands on person. And apparently encouraging these organizations to to basically come up with uh, models which are contest specific and so it, it's been if you listen and watch mm -hmm. it's been a participatory um, growth from if I should say that mm -hmm. from all the partners we have worked with it, it looks like they believe that each and every other person from the board to the programs unit has a role to play in the success of these organizations. Okay. And, and I think that is the most commendable thing. And, and, and it was very evident that our follow-up um, actually helped them to iron out the gray areas. Mm -hmm. I mean, some portions where they had developed some policies, um, how they had to communicate the policies to staff, communicate to management, and communicate to the board, and also how they even interplay with your advocacy and the, the, the stakeholders all came to play. And I think this experience gave us the opportunity to share other hands-on and, and experiences to overcome the bottlenecks. Okay. I, I believe and encourage that many, many partners, uh, uh, development partners and INGOs that work with these people should, should sometimes sit around the table and, and see the practical bit about it. Okay, so let's, you are a finance person, right? Um, what were some of the challenges you identified going around visiting these um, organizations and um, what were some of the practical advice that you gave them okay um i i think the first thing mm -hmm. generally was lack of resource and also to the point that many of them could not get a resource to buy working materials like a, a very standard computer and even to talk of like on a running accounting package. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. However, with our training, uh, we encourage for an effective reporting, you need to have effective documentation through your uh, uh, supporting documents into the accounting system for sound um, uh, check and balances with your double entry transactions. However, majority of them are lacking from mm. here. So we, we suggest that many uh, tools that they can get. Um, whilst the Institute is also working with TechSoup to see how we can get the um, uh, West Africa Institute uh, uh, package to some of these beneficiaries so that it lessens the amount of money they might use to buy these off the shelf but in effect be relevant. I think, I think the passion is there, the intention is there. I think a small push 
and 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 maybe probably donors also building a little bit of an overhead to resource such project implementations with some of these um, uh, maybe a laptop mm -hmm. or an accounting package or possibly also sign up with the um, the accounting bodies within these respective um, um, countries to to give them okay. some level of uh, uh, support because I, I think all of them have recognized that working to have a credible state of reporting gives them access to renewing their um, uh, registration documentation mm -hmm. and also being a target for uh, receiving credible and better grants and if they do receive better grants and resources they are able to expand their interventions to the very remotest part of, of their operations and I I think well I mean it's a it's a nice opportunity because majority of the people we met are the real grassroots um, implementers and sometimes it's a bit uh, um, disheartening that the the very ones who go to mm -hmm. the roots of the courses mm -hmm. lack the resources but are just driven by passion and even though the passion is there i mean resources are important to improve okay um so talking about learnings with all the information the lessons the learnings that you've gathered in the field um, what do you think or what should Waxi do? Which areas should Waxi dedicate more resources and more support to based on what you've learned in the field this past two weeks? I think first and foremost if we had a lot of support for basic logistics as I said in the form of uh, computers um, in the form of amplifying the software base that we give to um, these participants, this, these organizations, and also helping them tell their stories because they perfectly understand where they are going, it will be better. I also have appreciated the fact that we got somebody occasionally to be uh, not a big brother but somebody to listen to them and where they are stuck they are being coached like an in-country resource person partially like something like that that they can refer to um, maybe somebody sometimes they always say um, the best assessor is a third person mm -hmm. and so maybe somebody to just check your dot in your T's and uh, before you send your report or something it, it, it's it's helpful it cannot be that consistent but occasionally I mean you get somebody to I think there was one one particular um, 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 uh, partner we went to who, who was so eager to transition from the Excel onto a, mm -hmm. uh, the QuickBooks section however uh, because the person took how um, uh, chart of accounts needed to be created was creating the chart of accounts based on the activity lines in the budget until so you realize that it was not going to be uh, consistent if the project changed it means you have to come back and come and rework the chart of accounts and so these hands-on stuff and and and, and uh, stories that we have seen it gives you the practical things to change the things to really um, um, reorient people on it, it's not that some of these things are not known but I mean people who have walked the talk and have had some experiences they are in a better position to advise and maybe help to get a better course okay in your submission you made mention of the tech donation program right um, what is the tech donation program and how has it been how has it benefited the organizations you've uh, visited so far well, well, I mean, the tech program is uh, uh, a donation 
project we um we have with TechSoup Global and then Waxi being the West African um uh, partner. Uh, we we have given through this project we have uh, delivered websites um, to a lot of these organizations and um, we have also given them office 365 and everybody who has i think who in this day and mm -hmm. age and especially in this COVID <laughs> period has seen how remote working has been of essence will 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 attest to the fact that um office 365 and its suit um it's a more um, credible and a lasting um resource for these people i mean taking them through the point where they some are in the field um not being able to uh, be on time be, be in the office on time and take part in staff meetings Sometimes it took some people about two months before they had meetings or program meetings. Mm. But exposing them to the um, the the features of Teams and also with this with the calendar, I mean, we were able to tell them how to organize their activities and also a better way that they could capture data and refer to it at any point in time with one terabyte gig. You can you are able to save a lot of information and. Because some were even saying that um, when there was a change, changing staff, some people carry some documents mm -hmm. because they were in their position. But with the introduction of S365, we told them that every information you keep online, you cannot move it out. It's for the organization. So, I mean, all those revelations that we gave them and walked them through, they were thrilled, they were happy, and it looked also that now we are bringing them to the world okay. because on this website that we've given them a lot of work has been done at the grassroots but nobody hears of them many of them could only be heard of when a sister organization had partnered them mm -hmm. and done a story and maybe i mean they are mentioned so you could not go anywhere to hear of them until you just google and you find out that let's say awdf or the likes or using yourself have done the work and mentioned the name mm -hmm. but with a relevant website and also maybe with the facebook as facebook and linkedin that we encourage them to get and twitter accounts and that a lot have started developing um they will be in sierra leone um, but sometimes we also use that to tell them that it's another means by which they can appeal to their diasporan community mm -hmm. uh, to get interested in their work and also um, start the resource mobilization from that side and who knows no. they, they, they might they might be earning better um, uh, returns and okay. increasing if i'm not biblical increasing their cost oh okay right so with a successful conclusion of the coaching exercise, what broad lessons have you learned or do you think Waxi can draw from this um, whole experience? Okay, I, I, I think one, one major one is that the relevance of TechSoup products and the follow-on support should never should never be absent from the donation basket that we give to um, these. Some have been there already. I can't say they are springing up, but some have been there. But be due to lack of resources, they have not been exposed to this. I, I also think that um, many, many of these uh, uh, regional bodies should, should also take time and do a little bit of um, introspection on what can transition all these of because uh, it, it's not it doesn't also work well to have all civil societies grouped in one bracket and um, some are really deprived and the expectation should vary okay. it should vary because some of the needs 
um, and, and having one blanket for all it's, it's, it's a bit um, um, challenging okay well thank you mr Cordia, for the time um we've come to the end of today's episode okay so um mr crudia we thank you for your time it's been a pleasure talking with you so ladies and gentlemen you've heard it from the man if you want to get in touch with waxy just go on to log on to our website www.waxy.org and you have an avalanche of information waiting for you out there on how you can build resilience in your organizations so until we come your way again, it's bye from Freetown. <laughs> Thank you.